today's office, an alpaca farm in the middle of Kansas. This is my office mate, Princess. We're Brittany and Nick, and these are our two kids, Olivia and Everett. We used to do most of our traveling on airplanes, but 2020 has kept us on the ground. So we thought, what a better time to explore the US. We bought a tiny RV. Oh, look at that. And took off with Nana, Pops, and Uncle Dylan. And now, we're headed west to see what it's like living in a tiny home on wheels. And living in our own bubble. Welcome back, family travelers. We're so glad you're here. Today, we're not really talking about travel per se, but more about how to work on the road or workations. We're right here in the west, in the mountains, traveling with our kids and the grandparents, and we're working from our little travel trailer on the road. So we're gonna give you our best tips on how did we get it done and make it feel like we weren't even away from home. Except for, by the way, when we're done working for the day, we got to go do some really cool stuff. So come along. This might be the most unique one of them all because we are currently working right beside a bunch of alpacas as they eat their breakfast. Other places we've worked, numerous campgrounds all across Wyoming, Colorado, Utah, even one in Montana. We've actually taken work calls in the middle of a national park. We've pulled over to the side of the road in the middle of nowhere to be able to squeeze in a little work. We've worked from wineries, breweries, you name it, we've probably worked there on this trip. But along with that come some challenges. One of the challenges, as you can see, Nick is, um, well, you don't look too comfortable there, buddy. You know what, this is actually not as terrible as it looks. I just didn't want to like, Put the table up because we're about to hit the road again so this is one of those when you're only staying overnight at a place for eight hours or ten hours enough to sleep you don't really want to like set up your office so i'm just doing my morning stuff sending some emails before we hop in the car and fire up the laptop from there normally we set the full table up and we have a dedicated workspace if we're going to be somewhere longer than 24 hours but since we're boondocking, we just sort of sat down and worked wherever. The other challenge, and there are several, totally worth it, but there are different challenges that come along with it. We multitask a lot in the mornings. Nick is currently making our coffee while he is on his laptop. I was eating my breakfast while I was taking a work call. Sometimes we're cleaning at the same time. Sometimes we're getting ready to drive to our next campsite. Multitasking doesn't mean you're not working. I think we can all be honest with ourselves and say that we're part of meetings and calls where we're not really a contributing member of the meeting, but we still need to be there to listen. So we use that as our opportunity to kind of get the cleaning stuff or wrangle the kids. But every morning, Brittany and I, we kind of nerd out a little bit. We get out our phones and we look at our calendars and we say, okay, I have this, 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 and this, or I have to be fully attentive, fully, fully participating in the meeting. So you and the kids got to get out and let me do this. And then we trade back and forth. So it works out really nicely. And then we flip a coin for when we both have competing meetings and see, see what we can do. Hey buddy. Now we just watch the kids while we're playing outside sometimes. It's a little breezy though. Normally it's a little nicer. Hi! Everett! Uh -oh. Got a good gap in meeting, so it's time to hook the camper up and pull out and be on the road and situated till the next one. Plus, the alpacas are gone. Coffee is an important part of being able to work remote and we make sure that we can have coffee wherever we are even if we don't have electricity like tonight. Back to the office. We have no access to electricity other than inside the car. When we're working that means we have to charge everything during our drive and then we can work while we're in the car as well as while we're in the camper. So because we we each have a computer to charge, and we also have our phones that we need to take calls on. We have this giant mess of cords. So many cords. I'm glad I'm not sitting in that seat. In order to be able to charge all of these devices at one time, we have this giant power brick. So we can link to it below. If we were only able to charge one or two devices at a time, it would take us forever. Everything would probably die and it would be hard to work. But with this thing, we're able to charge up to five or six devices at once. So 
it ensures that we can keep everything fully charged and keep working. Random side note that we just discovered, because that's what all you can do is read signs when you drive. We're in Hebron, Nebraska, and that is Nebraska's porch swing capital. So, there you have it, folks. And then some work days call for triple the energy. That day is today. Oh dear. Don't let any of that energy get away. He's our little co-worker. Well, work is officially done for the day. It took us a little bit longer than we thought to drive to our next location, which happens sometimes when you have to stop for work calls because your cell coverage cuts out. There are some other things that we wanted to talk about, but it's starting to get dark and we have to get parked and the work day is over. So we'll be back to talk tomorrow morning about some more work from the road, working remote tips and things that we've learned along the way. It's a chilly one today. It's the next day. We intended fully to film last night when we got here. This place is lovely. It's Busby Meadery. However, we got lost. We arrived late. It was pitch dark, but the owners were so fantastic and welcoming. They helped us get parked. They invited us up to their deck to enjoy a glass or two of mead. We still have lots that we want to talk about working remote and that actually leads me into one of our next points. One of the biggest reasons that we wanted to do this is because you can work all day, shut your computer down, and then just explore and have fun at night. We do have to get back on the road. Today is our very last driving day. So we're gonna get in the car and then we'll talk about a few other things that we hadn't gotten to mention yet. Let's go. This is probably the part of the video where you're wondering what we do for Wi-Fi and cell service. Pretty impossible to work without at least one of those two things. When you're going through mountains or you're in between towns in the middle of Wyoming, it can be pretty hard because you can be without cell service or Wi-Fi. We did try to plan ahead, making sure that we weren't working on days where we didn't know if we'd get cell reception. A lot of the campgrounds had Wi-Fi, but I would not classify it as reliable in any sense of the word, which we knew going into it and we were okay with. But what we did rely on was cell service. We stayed in locations where we knew that we would be able to get cell service and then we used our hotspot. For... Olivia and Everett decided they wanted to join in the fun. We're actually at a rest stop now because we had work calls. And sometimes you have kids in the background of your work calls. You can get a cell phone booster, which we've heard helps a little bit, but we decided not to go that route and we would just use our hotspot whenever we need it. And that worked out okay. Oh, hi, Everett. Oh, he gave me a leaf. It feels so wonderful to be at home. Like, so much space around here. Movie magic, it's been a little bit of time and in all the excitement of seeing the kids run through the house for the first time after a month, which after this part, we're gonna show you. We learned a lot on this trip. And one of those things that we learned is that Nana and Pops were integral to this operation. Like we couldn't have done it without them. We probably could have, but it would have been a lot more difficult with a lot more planning. The key to a successful workcation or whatever you want to call it is planning in advance, but also being flexible. It's a bit of an oxymoron because how can you be planning but then roll with it? Here's the thing. When you're on a trip like this, things change. You don't have reception when you expect it to or the Wi-Fi is crappy or whatever. Your car breaks down. We had all of those things, so go back and check out some of our other videos if you want to see that. I digress. Make sure the people that you're working with know that you're traveling. They'll think it's cool anyway. So just let them know that there's a chance that you might have to reschedule a meeting or that they'll hear a kid in the background or any other scenario that will happen, will happen. So just let them know, be straightforward. The other thing to really plan on is Wi-Fi availability or cell service. We did a lot of research in advance to figure out where are we gonna have coverage, but that went out the window a lot of times. You're in the West, what are you gonna do? Coverage is spotty. We did meetings on 
the side of the road <laughs> because we got cell service and we had a meeting scheduled. Like, stop, stop right here, do it. Another thing that we really planned out was our PTO and how well we were gonna be away from the office. So what we like to do is take shorter travel days and just do half days for work. So in the mornings, while we were getting the kids ready to go over to Nan and Pops' camper, we were doing like our morning stand-ups, making breakfast for the kids, so on and so forth. So we really planned around being able to maximize our time off while still being able to explore and still being able to dedicate the time to work and to vacation. We actually downloaded a lot of like spreadsheets or queries that we had to do for work, had them on our laptop just so if we lost internet, we could still be productive. And the last one is, and this sounds so dumb, but have a dedicated workspace. Like we used our dinette and we had like our laptop set up and it was like our workspace. We didn't do it from the bed very often or we didn't like, you know, leave and go elsewhere. It was kind of like our work zone. So when we were sitting there, we were able to focus and that helps us, but some people don't need that. You do you. If you ever have an opportunity to do something like this, to work from the road, do it. This was the most amazing experience. We got to spend so much time as a family, got to work and didn't have to burn all of our PTO. And we got to see parts of the country that we never would have explored otherwise. So if you have the ability, do it, do it, do it, do it. It stinks that we're doing the pandemic thing, but there's gotta be a silver lining somewhere and this was it for us, for sure. So we've been gone for over a month. The kids are getting anxious to come in and check. It's the cutest thing, so stick around and watch that. But until then, make sure you subscribe, Follow us on all of our Insta, Twitter, whatever. You know what to do. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. Hey, Libby. What? You recognize yeah. this place? Look well, back at home. Does it look like how you left it? Yeah. Yeah. Are you? What's the thing you're most excited to see? Wow. Well, I'm most excited. To see, to see my friends. Your friends. All right, girlie. Okay. Take it away. Where are we? Big Joe. Big Joe. Let's look at my room. Your room. Oh my gosh! What are you gonna do with all this space? Ten seconds and you already have one of your princess dresses on.